Hello everybody and welcome to the next part of our Python with Flask web development tutorial video series. Uh, in the last video we got our basic website showing up here and this is what it looks like. Um, we just have this one page though, we want to add some more pages and we want to learn some of the basics about making our website uh, you know, look like a, a more interesting website. So uh, with that let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing uh, I want to do is so come over here to SCP. Oops, hello. And there's a few things I want to do immediately in SCP. So if you're using um, some other program than SCP, I highly suggest you try to do the same thing in that program. Um, but anyway, uh, at least in WinSCP, you can go Options, <clears throat> Preferences, Editors, and then you can specify the specific editor that you want to use for the specific file type. So for my .py files, I use idle for my editor, and for every other file, I try to use Notepad++. So basically for HTML files, I want to use Notepad++, but for all Python files, I want to use IDLE. And just for the record, Python's IDLE is located um, in this, here's the path to it, C colon slash Python 27 lib slash idle lib. And then you want to use idle.py. You can use the executable version of idle. Uh, it's just going to make a little window pop up every time. It's kind of annoying, but you can do whatever you want. But anyway, this is the path to it, uh, uh, just in case. So anyway, cool. So that's that. Notepad++, depending on where you've installed Notepad++, at least for me, C program files, x86, Notepad++, Notepad++, exe. If you don't have Notepad++, I highly recommend you get it. Uh, it's a really great uh, Notepad editor kind of thing. It's like a, it really is like the, you know, uh, plus plus version of Notepad. So, anyways, hit it. Okay, there, all set. So now, if you go and open up init.py, for example, I double click that, and up pops this for me because I'm using um, SCP and I've specified this as my editor. So this is the actual uh, script. So I could go like, hey there, blah, like this, save that. Uh, you can see it just uploaded to the server. And then we should, we can probably refresh that. Yeah, and get the new stuff. But if you've just dealt with an error, you maybe just created an error, don't forget to uh, just run Service Apache 2 restart just to be certain on your updates. Uh, so we'll come back over, um, whoops. I was going back. There we go. Fresh. Every all is well. Um, oh, also since we didn't get a chance, I I, I don't have app.debug working for me, so uh, I want to show you guys really quickly um, kind of another solution. If app.debug works for you, great. But and then also if anybody has a suggestion on on why app.debug is equals true doesn't work for me, um, please let me know because I'd love to have it. But anyway. So home page, basically what you could you can you can encase things in try and accept. So you can have try, you know, something and then finally return that. And then you can have accept uh, exception, comma, e, so your typical uh, exception, and then return, and then just have it return the string e. And later on you can make this much more impressive. So here we have return high there, but we can also try uh, x plus five as well, or fifty-six in, in this case. Hit OK, Enter, Refresh, and we see that we got our error. And it says global name X is not defined. So had we not done try and accept though, and um, you know we can tab this back over, save, refresh a bunch of times. Let's see if Shift F5 will do it for us. Okay, so, <laughs> so seriously, that's you know you've got to do a Apache restart. I swear it's like server side, you know. Anyway, um, now you get the internal server error, and you have no idea like what went wrong. That's why app.debug is so useful, but for whatever reason, I can't get it to work. Um, so we'll come back to SCP here. And so we've got a, uh, you know, returning high there. But this is actually, I mean, this is pretty... Um, pretty useless you know if like you have to return um, let's see I want to get rid of this one and uh, hmm. anyway so that's not really that helpful so what we want to do now is we want to use what are called 
we call templates. So we use a template to like load information um, from an HTML file, and then we can use Python to pass through variables into that HTML file, and then we actually also have the ability to uh, run logic statements uh, through the HTML file. So with that, let's go ahead and show that. So come over to SCP, and we're going to go into our uh, templates directory, and right now there's nothing. So let's go ahead and go new file, and I'm going to call this index.html. And so index.html is just going to be, um, you know, the typical page that we reference. So um, just so I don't forget everything, I'm going to bring a copy of HTML over here. And here we go. So for the most part, you can get away with just using HTML tags these days. So HTML, and then close your HTML tags. Um, if you don't, if you're not already familiar with HTML, um, I wouldn't. I I would suggest you kind of like look into maybe some basic HTML tutorials. Also JavaScript, um, just just to get a general understanding of like how that stuff kind of works, and just so you know like what's possible and what's not. That way, when you come up to a problem, you know what to look for. Um, so anyway, in your HTML tags, and then we're gonna have our head tags here, head and head, and here goes like meta tags, and like when we get a style sheet, uh, we'll throw the style sheet in there. Uh, but for now, we don't really have anything that we need to put in there, so we're not gonna put anything in there. And then we have the body class, and this is where like all of your you know act b day body. This is where body goodness. This is where like all your like actual stuff, like your nav bar, your logo, your actual website content, basically everything goes in the body tag, and then that's about it. So now on our body tag, uh, we have a couple of things you can have uh, with HTML5. You can add in like header tags, so you can have header. Oh my goodness, header tags. You can have footer tags down at the bottom too, and those will be like footer. Um, but header and footer corresponds to like groups of things so like you might think the footer only goes on the bottom but no there's a header and footer for like every uh, like if you throw stuff in what's called a div tag um, that's gonna be a header and footer for that div tag so anyway that's why it's really useful to look into uh, some basic HTML tutorials if, if you're getting lost uh, well we're hopefully we won't uh, have to cover too much HTML anyway so that's okay so now um, we have body, and then within our body, so here body, you can say body class equals, um, we'll just say the main body, but body, okay. Now within body, you have another body, right? And that's what I meant about like header and footer tags. So like you could have a header and footer to the main body class, but then you've got child body classes. Um, talking about bodies of children now. Anyway, <laughs> body, body. Um, and then within these body tags, this is where we can pass um, some general information. So, like, let's say, let's you know, uh, well, I don't want to make a blog, but it's so hard to like avoid blog-like things. But say you want to just make a like a basic static web page, right? So this static web page, every web page is going to have um, a title, and we'll say we want the title and header three tags, so kind of bigger font, and then. You're going to have you know some paragraph stuff, right? So some paragraph data slash p. So like like say here title, and then we'll come into paragraph and like you know paragraph data paragraph stuff. Save that. Uh, we'll come over to Putty here. Run a quick refresh just to make sure. Come over to our website. We'll refresh. Uh oh, server error. What do we do? What we got going on? Let's see. Go back to init.py, return, hi there. I'm conf oh, maybe we just never saved it or something. Let's try that again. Fresh. Okay, hi there. Okay, so cool. Now, how do we render that, that template? Well, what you're going to want to do is you come back over to uh, your script, which is here, and instead of just returning text, you can return a template. And so to do that, we're going to come up to the top of our script here. It says from Flask import Flask. And in fact, let me uh, configure idle here, make it a little larger so everybody can see it. So from Flask import Flask, and then comma. And we also want to uh, have it import render underscore template. And it's going to automatically know to look for templates in the template directory. 
Um, same thing with like static stuff. So when you have like a CSS file, um, some basic JavaScript stuff, it's gonna just automatically kind of know to look in, in static. Although with a CSS file, uh, I think yeah, yeah, you'll you'll still probably put URL four and then you'll go into the static directory. But anyway, render template always gonna look in templates. So anyway, define homepage, return, and instead of this, like let's say we want to return HTML, so we're gonna return render underscore template. And then in parameters, you put the template that you want to return. In our case, that's index.html. And then there's some magic that can happen. You can add some more parameters to this and pass through variables. And that's where things get great. But, excuse my dog if you can hear that. Um, but we'll get there. So hold on, let's uh, restart Apache real quick. And we come over here, refresh. And now you see we've rendered our HTML where we've got title, paragraph stuff, okay? Now, this is where the true magic happens. So as I said, you can pass through variables and you can use logic statements. So first, let's do this. So we come over to index.html uh, in our templates. And instead of title, what we can say instead is this, the following. So we can do, um, what, curly braces, I suppose is the name of this. So double curly braces, space, title, space, double curly braces. And then... Um, again, double curly braces, space, space, double curly braces, and then in here, paragraph. And I'm just going to undercase title just because it's going to be a variable. So these double curly braces denote um, variables in HTML. So you'll see what I mean in a moment. So go ahead and save index.html. And now we're going to come back over to um, our init.py uh, file here and render template index.html and now we want to pass through a title variable so we're going to say comma title equals and then what do we want the title to be so we're going to say um, epic tutorials and then we're going to do comma and then we're going to say paragraph equals and then um, wow I am learning so much great stuff exclamation mark so we'll save that we'll come over to our server we'll do a quick restart come over to our page and we'll refresh and now we see that actually we've taken Python we've used Python code and we've passed variables through to our HTML um, page here to basically dynamically load some text to the screen okay so that's how we can pass through uh, variables in it from Python to HTML using these uh, these basically double curly braces. Now there are a few other things that we can do. We can we can do loops, so we can do like a for loop, and we can also do uh, conditional statements like if, else, elif, and all that. So that's what we're going to be covering in the next uh, video or two. So stay tuned for that. If you guys have any questions or comments on this video, feel free to leave them below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.